this lecture, we're going to talk about intermolecular forces, which are forces at that attract covalent molecules together. Uh, basically, there's four different types of intermolecular forces. Uh, hydrogen bonds are one type that um, uh, I just showed on the last slide. Uh, there's dipole ion interactions, dipole dipole interactions, and London dispersion forces. Um, London dispersion forces are also known as van der Waals interactions, and for some reason, um, chemists often use the term London dispersion force, and biologists often use van der Waals interaction. They're interchangeable, um, so it's good to be familiar with both terms. Um, all four of these interactions are due to attraction of uh, positive and negative charges um, that exist uh, in molecules. Uh, e Intermolecular forces vary in strength depending on the magnitude of the difference in uh, positive and negative charges across the molecule, with hydrogen bonds being the strongest intermolecular force and London dispersion forces being the weakest. A dipole moment is what we call an uneven charge distribution across a molecule. Uh, when, a di when we have a dipole meet, the electrons are shared but not equally, so it occurs within a covalent uh, compound. Uh, so here is an example. We have hydrogen fluoride. If you remember from our previous lecture, hydrogen has a very low electronegativity, so it has a weak pull in electrons. Fluorine has a very high electronegativity, so it has a strong pull. This results in a dipole moment, which is an uneven charge distribution across the molecule. Um, and the delta is, uh, in science, is often used as a, a, to mean partial. So we have a partial positive charge on hydrogen and partial negative on fluorine. Now, this isn't a complete um, positive negative charge because this is still a covalent bond. So the hydrogen does have uh, electrons some of the time, but it's enough of a charge distribution that we can notice it, that there's um, this basically... Um, we can see this uh, uneven charge distribution, and essentially the molecule behaves like a tiny magnet. But previously mentioned, a hydrogen bond is the strongest intermolecular force. And uh, like all intermolecular forces, it's uh, due to attraction between positive and negative charges. So why is the hydrogen bond the um, largest intermolecular force? It's because the um, dipole moment um, is the strongest uh, within the molecule. So remember, uh, dipole moment's a charge distribution across the molecule. And um, in previous lecture, we learned that hydrogen has the lowest electronegativity of any nonmetal, and uh, fluorine has the highest, and oxygen and nitrogen are right behind uh, fluorine. They're the second and third highest electronegativity. Um, so the, if we look at the difference in electronegativity between fluorine and hydrogen, it's 1.9. Uh, it's 1.4 for uh, hydrogen and oxygen, and uh, 0.9 for hydrogen and nitrogen. Um, so if we look at this uh, chart at the bottom, remember that uh, electronegativity difference of two or greater is considered to be an ionic bond. So the HF bond is nearly as strong as an ionic bond. So the uh, it's, what happens is essentially hydrogen fluoride has a very large dipole moment, um, a very large uneven charge distribution, So mean, which means it behaves uh, like a tiny magnet and it's got a very strong, uh, fairly strong um, attractive force due to this uneven charge distribution. Um, hydrogen and oxygen also have a very large um, dipole moment, which means that the bond is very polar um, between hydrogen and oxygen. So then we have this uneven charge distribution across the um, water molecule, like shown in the upper right. And essentially what happens is um, the oxygen on one water molecule has partial negative charge and is attracted to the hydrogen of another water molecule which has a partial positive charge. Um, so within a glass of water, um, liquid water, we have these um, molecules attracted to each other, um, and they uh, basically uh, 
kind of hold each other together. And um, this is also true in, in ice. So this is the force that holds um, water molecules together in a glass of water or in ice. Uh, just to uh, uh, emphasize again, um, hydrogen um, bonds occur only in um, molecules that have a bond between hydrogen and either fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. Um, and they may have more than one of these bonds, but they have to at least at the minimum have one. And um, since uh, the electronegativity uh, difference is large, we have a very strong dipole moment, and we form this very strong intermolecular force um, called a hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond is an unfortunate name because a hydrogen bond isn't a true bond. It is a uh, intermolecular uh, interaction. Um, so basically, uh, it occurs between two different molecules. Uh, so typically, uh, when we think of a bond, a bond is something that holds a compound together. So uh, the uh, solid lines between the uh, oxygen and hydrogen in a single water molecule are covalent bonds. And then we also learned about ionic bonds. So uh, bonds, uh, true bonds, hold molecules together. A hydrogen bond is actually an intermolecular force. So it's pretty strong, but not as strong as bond holding a water molecule together. So basically, hydrogen bonds, even though they're pretty strong, they're constantly um, forming and being broken. And uh, so this is why water pours, uh, because in liquid water, that hydrogen bonds are relatively weak. Um, so they can pour, but they're strong enough to hold it so that the water is a liquid, not a gas. Um, and if it weren't for hydrogen bonds, water would be a gas at room temperature, um, just like carbon dioxide. So CO2 and H2O, they're fairly similar in size. And um, the one reason that um, water is, or the reason that water is a uh, liquid is because it's got hydrogen bonds. Uh, carbon dioxide, which is a polar molecule, does not have these bonds and is a gas. Um, so just to reiterate, the hydrogen bond is an intermolecular interaction. It is not a true bond. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, did, oh yeah, just uh, want to mention there that uh, inter uh, the intermolecular interactions, the uh, uh, hydrogen bond has about two to five percent the strength of a covalent bond. Um, so the next type of so the next type of uh, intermolecular force we're going to talk about is the ion dipole interaction. So hydrogen bond is the strongest. This is the next strongest. And this is an attraction um, between uh, positive and negative charges, again, all um, like all intermolecular forces. And as the name implies, uh, this is between an ion and a dipole. So an ion um, would be from an ionic compound. And a dipole is a molecule, a polar molecule, basically, that has an uneven charge distribution across it. Um, so ion-dipole interactions are the reason that ion compounds dissolve. So if we look here, this shows uh, salt crystal dissolving. And basically what happens is each of those spheres represents um, positive and negative charges. So the um, the uh, negatively charged chlorine, let's assume this is sodium chloride, it could be anything, but let's, um, if it's a chlorine, it's a negative charge on it. It's attracted by the positive, partial positive charge on the hydrogen atom in water, as you can see over on the upper um, right there. And the sodium ions, um, which have a positive charge, are attracted by the uh, negatively charged oxygen. So this attraction is strong enough that the um, it's actually uh, can uh, it's more favorable for the sodium and chloride to be surrounded by water molecules in this way than it is to interact with themselves within the crystal. So this causes the crystal to dissolve. So the source uh, of the charges for an ion di dipole is again an ion, um, typically from an ionic compound, um, or it could be a polyatomic ion. Um, and it's a dipole moment 
in a polar molecule is the other uh, source of the charge. This is what causes sodium chloride to dissolve. Um, it interacts with the water rather than the sodium interacting with the chloride ion. And we can also, uh, so that's the uh, ion dipole interaction. And then we also have uh, the uh, intermolecular uh, or the hydrogen bond. Um, so either one of these uh, could occur. And in a glass of water, in fact, you're going to have um, bonds constantly being broken and uh, reformed, and you're going to have both kinds, like if it's salt water, you're going to have both kinds of bonds. You're going to have hydrogen bonds between water, and you're going to have ion dipole interactions between the salt and water. The third type of intermolecular force we're going to talk about is a dipole-dipole force. Um, and again, this is a force between positive and negative charges, but this, in this case, um, the source of the charge is um, a dipole moment across a polar molecule, um, and it includes all molecules, ex or all molecules except those containing HF, HN, or HO bonds. Um, so, uh, for example, one example is formaldehyde, which is CH2O. Um, so we have a bond between carbon and oxygen. So the oxygen has a partial negative charge, and then the uh, hydrogens at the opposite end have a partial positive charge. Um, so uh, just uh, to emphasize, when we have a hydrogen bond, the bond has to direct, be directly between the hydrogen and fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. So if we look here, this mole uh, the formaldehyde molecule does have hydrogen and oxygen but they're not directly bonded to each other. Um, so basically, this means that there's like, a, um, since it's a, there's a carbon in between, there's not as strong a dipole moment. Um, so it's a little bit weaker force. The dipole-dipole force is uh, weaker than the hydrogen bond. And you can think of the hydrogen bond as actually being like an extreme dipole-dipole force. It's the same type of force, but it's just a lot stronger, so it's given its own name. Um, and also because it has such importance, particularly in biology. Dipole-dipole um, forces are weaker than hydrogen bonds, and they're also um, weaker than uh, ion-dipole bonds. And the reason um, they're weaker than uh, hydrogen bonds, so is because the difference in electronegativity is smaller. Um, and... Okay, so let's compare uh, hydrogen bonds and di dipole-dipole forces. Uh, you can actually think of a hydrogen bond as a particularly strong dipole-dipole force. Um, so hydrogen bonds, remember these are made uh, between, uh, in, uh, uh, mo between molecules that contain uh, hydrogen bonded to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. Um, and they have... Uh, these bonds have a particularly large difference in electronegativity. So hydrogen is the least electronegative nonmetal. Fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen are the most electronegative. So they have a very, uh, they basically form a very strong um, a dipole across the um, bond. For a dipole-dipole force, we have a, a less uh, weaker electronegativity. So if we look at carbon and hydrogen bond, it's 0.4. So that's a not very polar. And then uh, carbon and oxygen um, is actually more polar, but um, still does not count as a, um, di a hydrogen bond. And I'll show you why. Um, so uh, first of all, we have... Um, if we look at uh, water on the top here, um, there's a very strong polarity between the bond um, uh, for on both for both uh, waters. Uh, so we have um, because they're identical bonds. So we have the strong polarity, so that we have a strong hydrogen bond between them. Now, if we look at formaldehyde on the bottom, the carbon um, and oxygen bond does have a strong polarity of 1.0. However, it's attracted to a carbon-hydrogen bond, which has weak polarity. And for this reason, um, the, the overall attraction is not as strong. Um, and this actually makes a huge difference. So water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty high for a small molecule. Uh, small molecules tend to have a lower boiling point, meaning that they're gas at room temperature. 
for water, it's high because of this very strong interaction. Um, and uh, we have uh, formaldehyde in the bottom here has a much uh, lower boiling point of minus 21 degrees. And the reason is that this bond or this uh, force is much weaker.